Hey guys, how's it going? Tactic Ion here doing another Door Kickers gameplay for you today. We are on level 15 doing the A-Team Challenge. Um, for those of you who haven't seen the three-star challenge, go check out my playlist. But um, also something you should do is go to the End the Kill House forums. Go to the discussion thread. Go to the three-star challenge sticky thread at the top. In that challenge, you will find Emu87 has posted videos, and I have posted them up. He basically did the three-star challenge speedrun edition. So he has amazing times, and I think on this map he has like 12 seconds, so you should go check that out. Also on that, uh, that thread, I reposted one of Hinky's videos. It is probably my favorite door kicker video to date, so you should go check that out as well. Anyways, let's get on with the A-Team Challenge. Um, so the, the strategy that I have for this is very similar to my strat for the three-star challenge, and that is that I don't want to approach this room until last which means I have to clear out this side of the building and this side of the building. Now before I can clear out this side of the building with these guys right here, I have to clear out this room and this room. Now before I can clear out this room right here, I can't use these guys to do it. This guy has a Mac 10 and he will just decimate these two guys as they come through the door. So um, I, I could throw a flashbang, but then there's also another guy who potentially is in here or there's somebody in, in coming through one of these doors. So I really just want to make sure that um, that I don't have to worry about either of those guys. Um, so what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to run this guy straight across. Um, so we'll go ahead and, and do that now. I want him to basically run through here, run through here, take out this guy. Uh, I'm giving him that extra time. And then I'm going to have him uh, run back. The reason I'm going to have him run back is because um, these people tend to go, the people that are up here tend to go on patrol. So I want him to come back and clear out those guys. Basically just check this room real quick just in case. And then we're going to have him come back down and clear this room. I want him to come Roger. wide in case there's a guy right there. Clear that room. I want him to come wide on this and clear this guy out. Roger. Make sure I Roger. throw a flashbang on that. Because uh, there's a guy in here right next to a hostage or two. And I, uh, well, occasionally there's a guy in here. Sometimes there's not. Um, but I want to make sure that I take the, that guy out and uh, save the hostages. And I'm going to bring this guy back up, and we're going to let him just sort of chill right here in this, this spot. That's good. That's Roger. the end of his range. Roger. So we're going to let him sit there. Um, now what we're going to do with uh, this M4 unit, well, before we do that, uh, I want these guys to round the corner right after this guy goes down. Um, something that would be nice is if I could see at what point, well, like if I could scroll over this or maybe um, mouse over it somehow and see this guy's... Um, spot on the mission clock so at this point he will be there at you know 12 seconds or something like that um, unfortunately that's currently not something in the game so I have to kind of uh, fudge it and the way that I fudge it is I've counted out how long it takes um, this 1911 guy to go 10 steps so it takes him four seconds to go 10 dashes so one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so there's four one two three four five six seven eight nine so there's about eight, so we can say it's going to take him about ten seconds to make sure that this guy is down. So I need these guys down here to sort of run a holding pattern for about ten seconds. That's easy for this guy. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So there's four, there's eight, and then we can have him come up here and um, around this corner. And we're going to have him basically just run this route right here. There shouldn't be any issues. I'm going to have him check that back room right there just in case. Uh, he should be able to clear this room with no problems. I want to make sure that when he clears this room that he goes wide Perfect. of that chair so that way I can get line of sight on the guy that's up Roger. here because he has a hostage as well. So we're going to take that guy out and we're going to have him come up and I want him to sort of run a holding pattern right here um, next to... Roger. There we go. I want him to be about equidistant from the door as that guy, just in, just so that when they round the door together, everything's copacetic, everything's nice. Um, now what we're going to do with uh, this guy is we want him to run also Roger. for about uh, 10 seconds. Now the SWAT units move at, uh, the, the 1911s unit move at 1.1 units per second. There's no indication of how the distance is, it's just 1.1 for speed. And the M4 moves at 0.7 for speed, so 0.7 units per second versus 1.1 units per second. Now we know that this guy moves, uh, f uh, in 4 seconds, he moves 10 units. That's, that's kind of how I'm factoring this right now. Um, so 
this guy moving at 0.7 that really needs to run about eight dashes for four seconds instead of the 10. So what we're gonna do here is we count out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So there's four, and then there's eight. And it's gonna take him Roger. a little bit longer to get back over here. So there's another like second. So that puts us at about nine. So he should be able to clear this Roger. room. Affirmative. Um, um, we're just gonna have him throw a flashbang just so that he matches up with this guy. Um, and I'm gonna have him throw, I guess there. Um, so that way he takes, uh, oh, actually, you know, let's go ahead and do it like this. I think they're both going to be about the same on the distance. So they should be able to, to, to come through both flashbangs. And we're going to have him uh, come up and wrap Roger. this way, check that. And then we're going to have him come up through here. And I want him to run up through here and, uh, oop, a little too high. Roger. I want him to get line of sight right through here. And, um... That'll allow him to take up pretty much everybody in the back area uh, single-handedly if this door is open. So that is the current goal for that. Um, now, we haven't touched this guy yet. The reason we haven't done that is because I want him to come and chill over here and watch this door. However, I also have to worry about people that might be coming up behind him because if they go on patrol, they're going to see him. They're going to shoot him in the back. So what I'm going to do about that is I want this guy to run up through here. Now you can do a holding pattern right here um, and, and catch them as they come out the door, but I would rather ha catch them, them from behind instead of having to worry about them potentially facing me. So we're going to have this guy basically run this route right here. Um, that should be good. And then he should be able to take out anybody he sees. We're going to have him pop into that room real quick just in case. I'm going to have him run down here and basically set up position to get line of sight on this door right here. Now, we don't want him to look through the door because there's two lines of hostages right here. And that means that he has a chance of shooting the hostages and the enemy has a chance of shooting the hostages. Now, for those of you who haven't seen the stats or, or haven't looked at it or haven't been on the forums to, to ask this question, um, shooting over objects like these tables or these chairs, um, if you're right up next to them, you incur no penalty, you can shoot right over them. But if you're not right up next to them, um, then you have a 50-50 chance. There's a 50% chance modifier that you're going to hit uh, the table. Um, same thing with the hostages. The hostages are in a kneeling position, and you run a 50% chance trying to shoot over them that you're actually going to hit them. The enemies also have 50% chance, um, which means that the guys that are up here with MAC-10s, if they see somebody down here, they're going to try and shoot, which means they're going to shoot and basically just kill the hostages because you have two sets of hostages here, each with 50% chance of getting hit. You kind of guarantee that these guys are going to get hit over the uh, the round, the, the clip that the, uh, the the enemy has to shoot for the MAC-10. So we're really not going to chance any of that. We're going to keep him here so he can keep line of sight in case somebody comes on patrol. But other than that, we don't want him to move up. Um, we're going to pretty much use these units right here to, to eliminate everybody up there. Um, and then once that happens, the 1911s are going to roll in. So... Let's go ahead and see how all this plays out. Yeah. All right, Tango so we down. took care of that guy. I want to make sure this guy's looking yeah. this way, Tango especially down. as he clears. All right, that's good. Reloading. Go. This guy down. is in a nice Reloading. Spot. Flash out. Tango Flash down. out. That's kind of. I was expecting those to um, to come through at the same time, so that's a little uh, scary. Roger. I'm hit. Oh uh -huh. no. Man down. No. Uh -huh. Man down. Damn it. I can't believe that guy took out both of them. No contact. Oh, oh my gosh. Man down. Alright, I don't know if it's possible to finish this mission out with one guy, but I'm gonna try. Get Flush down. out! It really Tango doesn't help down. that my guy is not shooting correctly and, and not hitting targets. And it's just... Really sad. Tango down. He's just able to get Reloading. That now that was the end of his move, so Roger. I'm gonna let him go ahead and walk all the way up through there and see if we can. Yeah. There Tango we go. There's an extra person. All right, Reloading. We're reload. Um, now he got the end of his move, so I'm gonna go ahead and move him back and and run the routes that I would run uh, normally, which is I'm gonna bring him down here. I don't Roger. want him to go through here in case there's somebody like right there who can see him and shoot the hostages. 
So we're going to run him wide. Um, we're going to run him up here. Check this spot. Um, I can't believe Roger. that those guys both got killed right there. Um, we're going to run him up through here. And then we're going to run him kind of wide and around on this. And Roger. Right, well, that's the end of that move. So we're going to go ahead and, and see... Uh, hopefully this works out Can't in our favor. Do it. Um, right now, a, uh, a fast forward button definitely Roger. would go amiss. Roger. I really shouldn't look up this way, but I'm going to try it anyway, just in case somebody's coming through this door. I don't want to miss that person. Oh no! Affirmative. I was way too close to the hostages. Reloading. Roger. Ow! Tango down. Oh. Roger. Reloading. Sorry. If you guys can't tell, I'm also a, a nervous reloader. I reload a ton in Battlefield. I'm one of those people that, like, oh, I shot one bullet. I better reload. I'm hit. Yeah. Tango down. Yes. Tango down. Reloading. Finally got one good shot in. I was over a chair, over a desk, still got him. Affirmative. All right. So I'm, I'm banking on this guy being the last one. Affirmative coming up behind him here, so that should... Tango down. Tango down. Good job. We're done here. So, that went horribly, horribly wrong. Um, everybody died. Which, uh, to be honest, this is probably the fifth or sixth time I've done this one, and on, on the problem I've, I'm constantly having is the hostages get shot. This is like the first time where I've just had everybody go down. So, um... That plan, probably not the best on account of I kept having to run running with the hostages, but um, you know, I would love to see somebody else's take on it. You got to see me here really fumble through a lot of stuff. Um, my problem with this one really is just that without being able to use the pause function, there's so much going on. Uh, maybe if I had spread out some of my maneuvers so that these guys weren't coming through right as that guy was coming through, maybe this guy wasn't going through as early as he did. You know, If I spread some things out, it probably would have gone better, but Considering how much explanation I do at the beginning of, of this one, um, I, I tried to uh, try to be really quick with the gameplay. So I, I, I think it's very possible to beat this in under two minutes using the A Team uh, Challenge uh, play. So I would love to see that. I also think it's very po I think it's really really possible to to get this three starred um, using a mission that you plan out from the beginning. So I would love to see somebody else's take on it. I would love to see somebody do it better. I I did probably the absolute worst you can do and still pass the a team challenge part of it so um i i here you go i have thrown down the easiest gauntlet ever it's not even a gauntlet it's like um one of those fingerless gloves you use to go weightlifting. like like this has got to be the easiest uh challenge for other people to do better so please show me how to play this game better thanks